Hello and welcome, this is Retired Gamer and today I'd like to summarize and give you my opinion on the game called Another Grub's Treasure. The video that would work as a background for this review is from the first hour of the game, so it should be spoiler free. Before we get started I'd like to remind you about the YouTube stuff, so if you will like this video maybe subscribe and give it a like if you will subscribe it, I guess? Also, if you have played the game, let me know in the comments what do you think about it. Okay, with that out of the way, let's start talking about the actual game. As for the plot, the main character of the story is a hermit crab called Krill. Krill has a quiet but lonely life in the shallows that form during high tides, protecting his delicate body from the attacks of vicious birds with a shell he calls his home. One day he is visited by a shady character who, on the pretext of Krill not paying taxes, takes his home away from him. With no safety from the predators, our main character takes a dive into the depths in order to recover his beloved shell. These events are just the beginning of a real life altering adventure for our main character. When it comes to the gameplay, the game is actually a fully fledged Souls-like. I probably don't have to explain what a Souls-like is, but just in case anyone has been sitting under a rock for at least 10 to 15 years, in games of this type we usually have a challenging combat, a lot of boss fights, limited healing options, and in case of defeat we lose all accumulated currency and have to get back to the place where we died to get it back. If we die again in the process we lose it for good. We can invest that currency in our stats or spend it in one of the shops to buy some helpful items. As for things that are not so common in a Souls-like, this game gives us a bit more options for adjusting the difficulty level, so a lot of people should be able to reach the end of the story. I think I'm a good example of that because I usually bounce away from such games. This one is also not easy but somehow I managed to overcome all adversity, which made it one of the first games of this type that I actually managed to beat. I'll start with what I think is the most important thing in a game of this type, that is the controls. The game is full of relatively demanding combat and platforming sections, so tight controls are super important. Overall, I think the devs did a very solid job here. Hitboxes seem to work properly, and our character is responding well to our inputs. Usually, when the fight does not go our way, we do not have the impression that we got cheated on. In the vast majority of cases, we know very well what we did wrong. Unfortunately, as you can hear, I use words like usually or majority of times, and of course I'm doing that on purpose, because unfortunately there are exceptions. I just wanted to stress though, that for the vast majority of time everything is working well, but these rare instances where something strange will happen don't feel great. Personally, I was more bothered by the problems with the camera or shortcomings related to broken geometry of the levels. There are situations in which our character gets stuck somewhere or our opponents fell under the floor. The number of those cases makes it impossible not to notice. In my opinion, those kind of problems are the biggest drawback of another crab's treasure. However, if you are able to digest the fact that once or twice you will die because such things, the rest of the game is full of good stuff. I'll return to the game's storyline for a moment, without spoilers of course, 
to point out a couple of important elements. In my opinion, the story is really interestingly written. There is a lot of humor, a lot of distinct and memorable characters, and interesting plot twists. Some you might expect, but some are total surprises. Plus, the story is much longer than I expected. It took me about 24 hours to get through it fully. However, you have to take into account that I'm already old and probably not the most skilled player under the sun, and at the same time I like to lick the walls quite often to look for any hidden treasures. In any case, even if someone will beat every boss in less than 3 attempts and will not be too interested in exploring every nook and cranny, I think that a full playthrough will still take up more than a dozen hours. The combat system is more or less what we can expect in these kind of games, but it also has a very interesting spin added by the creators. On one hand, our main skills are what we can expect. We have fast attack, power attack, block and dodge. This is our main arsenal and with a bit of skill you can probably beat the whole game without doing much else. However, on top of that we gain access to some of the skills of beaten bosses, we have a fishing line with a hook to reel in enemies, a skill tree that allows us to unlock a total of probably a dozen important passive bonuses or active skills, and most importantly, we can use various found items as a replacement for our shell. There are really a lot of types of those items. They vary in weight, so for example you can do faster dodges or block your opponent blows more efficiently. And on top of that, each type of shell also has a special magic skill assigned to it. Some of these skills are really OP, so I really recommend experimenting with them all. As you can see in the video, the graphics are quite simple. It's aesthetically pleasing and also makes it really simple to understand what is happening on the screen. It's aesthetically pleasing and also makes it really easy to understand what is happening on the screen. I think it fits the game perfectly and also the hardware requirements are not through the roof. As for the music, for most of the time it's just there and it's not bothering us too much. There are some moments where we get a special soundtrack and then it really draws attention to itself. The sounds of the battle are cool and thanks to that I think the devs were quite successful in giving us sound feedback of what is happening on the battlefield. With a bit of experience we know exactly if we connected with our hit or parried an opponent's blow just by listening. On top of that, many enemies make special sounds which allows us to prepare ourselves for what is lurking around the corner. The last thing on this topic are the dialogues. The good news is that, in my opinion, the voiceover is very well done. This applies to everyone, our main character, our key opponents as well as our allies. The bad news however is that the voiceover is present only in very few key moments. Most of the time, unfortunately, we have to read the dialogues ourselves. This was probably done to save some money, but given how good the voiceover is, I really regret that it's not there for all or at least most cases. Finally, a short paragraph about the moral of the story. The fact is that another crop's treasure is trying to pass on a pretty strong message, and it's also multi-level. We can see changes and growth in individuals, but we also see a rather sad picture of our civilization. If only just for that I really recommend the game. Even though graphics might look like the game is for children, the story is very mature.
I think you probably already know that I like the game very much. It really has a lot to offer. The story, the characters, everything is written and presented really neatly. Everything makes sense and holds together, which is not that common these days in games. If you can deal with the fact that it's a Souls-like and will be able to turn a blind eye to a few minor shortcomings, this title will give you a lot of satisfaction and at the same time perhaps will also leave you with some food for thought afterwards. That would be all from me for today. If you liked it, I again encourage you to subscribe. It costs you nothing and for such a small channel as this, each new subscriber makes a big difference. See you in the future in another review or FOSS video. I hope to see you here again soon and until then, as always, have some fun playing games. See you, bye bye.